Oi! Do you see that? <laughs> nice! Ah, it works! This is sodium. Sodium is an alkali metal which is soft enough to be cut with a knife. On the freshly exposed surface you can see the nice metal shine. It will quickly fade away though as the sodium oxidizes in contact with the air. And this chunk is potassium. Potassium is also an alkali metal and even softer than sodium. Just like sodium, it reveals its pretty metal shine only after being cut and loses it after a few seconds. But really interesting is what happens when you bring both of them into contact with each other. Here I am pressing a piece of sodium onto a piece of potassium and you can see a drop of liquid metal forming at the contact surface. What you see here is the formation of an alloy between sodium and potassium. It is a eutectic mixture, which means the melting point of the alloy is lower than the melting point of sodium or potassium. Therefore, it is a liquid at room temperature. It is a highly reactive metal which oxidizes rapidly in contact with air and explodes in contact with water. Here you can see an example from Elias channel, Elias experiments. Some of you may have already seen this alloy called neck, and you might ask yourselves what I have planned with it. Well, a few years ago I saw a video by Periodic Videos in which they showed some old footage of a fountain using neck instead of water. Apparently a similar configuration to this fountain was used to test the resistance of different metals in contact with this alloy. But as it is common today, the fountain was destroyed because it was considered too dangerous. Therefore, in this video I will recreate this fountain. Let's take a few seconds to talk about what it is I have to build out of glass. The main concept is pretty simple. I have a large glass tube with a smaller glass tube inside and the small glass tube is where the neck will squirt out of and after the neck squirts out of here it will collect at the bottom here and through a second opening it will recirculate to get back into um, the pump. Here I have two um, glass pieces where I will seal um, two tungsten rods inside, one on each side. These tungsten rods will be um, used for the magneto hydrodynamic pump. It is a pump that uses no moving part, so um, I will connect a voltage here and the current will flow through here, a magnetic field will go um, from the camera through the glass tube and the Lorentz force will act upon the neck and propel it upwards so it will squirt out of the glass tube. Then it collects here, flows back through this tube and gets back to the pump. And this is what I have to build out of glass. Of course, because neck is very prone to oxidation, I have to close it up on top here with a um, opening where I can connect an argon and a vacuum line and where I can also fill in the neck. I will build two versions of this. The first one is a prototype to see how everything works and what to improve. It is, uh, I already did that, I'm in the future now. And the first version, um, the flame working is pretty, yeah, I didn't film that much of it because I had to learn a lot. Um, but it, I will show you what I have nevertheless because maybe some of you find it interesting. And the second version is documented a lot better. And if you're not interested in the flame working part, you can just skip it. But if you're interested, I'm of course happy if you watch it. To hold the magnets in place, I 3D printed those two parts here. And I have these neodymium magnets I can place in here, just like that. And I can screw them down. And I hope two of them, or one on each side will be enough. But it's possible that I have to stack them and use more or get stronger, larger magnets. But that's what the prototype is for, so we will see. So this is the prototype I built. <laughs> As always, my self-made glass pieces don't look nice, but it should work to test the concept. If it works, I'm going to build a nicer one. Um, I fused the two tungsten pieces um, into the glass tube here, so they seal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this tube up with um, neck after I flushed it with argon, so there is no oxygen inside. 
and the neck will flow through here, down here, and stay in this tube here. And what I'm going to do then is apply a voltage here and here, around 3 volts. And I have my magnets, and they are placed just like this. So this is my setup, please don't judge me, I know it looks horrible, but it's just improvised to test it. I have a rubber stopper on top of my glass tube here, and a cannula is punched through the rubber stopper, and the cannula goes to my vacuum pump and also my argon cylinder, and I'm now going to put a vacuum on it, flush it with argon, put a vacuum on it, and do that three times to... Um, exchange all of the oxygen and ambient air inside the glass apparatus with argon. You can see the neck and the syringe here. I'm honestly not sure if the mineral oil or petroleum ether um, will interfere with the process, but I don't think so. So I'm just going to try it. Okay, it oxidized way more than I would have liked, but I will now um, turn the power supply on and just see what happens, if anything happens at all, um, to get yeah, just some experience with what the voltage and magnetic field needs to be. Yay! Do you see that? The problem now was that... Um, the tube right here isn't angled enough, so the neck doesn't want to flow back. So I guess that uh, there, yeah, there's no neck down here, so the pump can't work anymore. But as you can see, the principle did work. And if I narrow the tube inside a little bit, I think we can get a nice fountain. So this was only semi-successful, but I learned a lot. Um, I never worked with neck in this manner before. So I noticed that I should seal the tungsten wire and the glass additionally with JB Weld or some kind of another epoxy. This tube definitely needs to be um, at a steeper angle. And I should make this whole uh, loop here shorter. That way I don't have to use as much neck because yeah, there isn't that much neck in the loop. And I definitely have to think of a way to introduce the or to, to fill the neck inside the fountain because as you have seen it oxidized severely. Um, yeah, those are all things I have to think about. And if you're asking yourselves what I'm going to do with the neck, I poured everything back that I still had in the fountain. It was quite a lot. It's uh, severely oxidized, but we can clean it up. And I'm now going to pour 99% isopropyl alcohol inside the fountain to let the leftover neck slowly react with it. You can see that the reaction is not nearly as violent as it is with water. And when everything has reacted, I can just wash the glass apparatus with water. I am using a diamond cutting wheel to cut the tungsten, because if you use um, normal tweezers, you risk um, splitting the rod in the middle and then of course oxygen and air can creep through that and you will never get a good seal. So to make sure or to try to get a better seal um, between the tungsten rod and my glass, I will try to fuse a small glass tube to my tungsten rod beforehand and then I can seal it to my fountain. So that's what I'm going to try now. Apparently, I've read that several times, um, 
there needs to be an oxide layer of tungsten oxide on the tungsten rod because the oxide is um, actually the stuff that seals um, or creates a seal with the glass. Here you can see me creating an oxide layer on the tungsten rod by keeping it in the flame for a while. That looks so much better than the seal at my current fountain. I can show you the difference. If you look at the seal right here, you can see that there's only one location right here that looks darker. It looks like the glass has properly connected with the tungsten there on top. And the other ones just look like there's a tungsten rod stuck in between two layers of glass. And the only location where there's a proper seal is right here. And if you now look at what I made now, you can see that this black area goes all the way around. So there's a proper seal um, the whole length of the rod. So I have to try to, this is my second version by the way, by the way. <laughs> and I have to, yeah, I will try to disconnect it here and get another small glass tube on here and seal my second, so one of those here onto them. I don't think I can save this here. I'm thinking about cutting it off right here, then making the two vacuum seals to a separate glass tube and then seal it back on here. While you watch me flame working, I want to use the opportunity to thank all of my patrons. You guys are awesome for supporting my passion and I'm unbelievably grateful for that. If you kept watching to this point, you could be the kind of person that wants to support me on Patreon. If so, you can find the link in the description. So I now created this tea. It looks awful in my opinion, but I think there is a saying, perfect is the anime of good enough. And I want to get a working version first before I can get nitpicky about how everything looks. Here you can see me sealing the tungsten rods with the glass sleeve I prepared earlier to the glass. So the seal looks a lot better on these things than my previous ones. If it's really better we will see. So I have now reattached this tube to my fountain right here. And yeah I can just say the seals look so much better. They could be actually vacuum tight, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, the next step is that I have to connect, um, I have to bridge these two here. And that's harder than it sounds because I have to blow a hole in here first and then bend this tube to the exact position, get the two, uh, two surfaces hot enough so they can weld together while keeping the position where I bent it hot and yeah, it's, it's a pain. So I'm thinking about using a glass tube to bridge it like this instead of bending it. I'm still not sure, but I think that's what I'm going to try. So I will blow a hole in here and in here and then fuse a piece of glass in between the two of them. In this shot, I'm connecting both tubes with each other. I'm still not sure how much of the actual flame working you want to see. So let me know in the comments if this style of editing, where I only show the finished steps, is what you like. Okay, I have one end connected. I will now remove the aluminum tape here, clean the ends up, and then I will reheat this um, elbow here and try to bend them together. Okay, it doesn't look great, but I'm satisfied. So, I will now close uh, the large tube off here. And whenever you're doing something like this, make sure you have another opening where you can attach your blow hose, because if not, yeah, you're screwed. Yep, so the next step is to seat it right here. Before I proceed with the build, I want to test if my seals, they look good, um, are actually vacuum tight. So I have my spring connected to the vacuum pump and I have my vacuum gauge attached. And now I will test what the pressure is when the vacuum is applied, so. Okay, that's quite good. It's not as low 
as I would have hoped. I would have hoped it would get to 0.02, but it's possible that there's still moisture in the gas apparatus from my breath. But I'm I'm satisfied with that. So after we've tested that the seals are at least um, vacuum tight enough, I will fuse an NS14 glass ground joint to the top right here because this way I am able to use a septum that I can place inside the glass ground joint to um, fill in the neck. So that's the next step. I will also connect a second tube at the side right here that I can use to pull vacuum on the system and flush it with argon. Okay, I have more neodymium magnets um, coming in the mail in a few days probably. And I often regret being impatient, but that's just one of those mistakes I'm, it seems I'm not able to learn from. So I will test it with the, with the single neodymium magnet. I think they are too weak, but I want to test the whole system and yeah, let's see if it works. The first thing I'm going to do is to close um, the glass ground joint on top here with a rubber septum and I can use it later to inject the neck. And now I will pull a vacuum on it and heat it up to desorb the moisture. You can see a little bit of cloudiness here. It's just from me uh, blowing into the glass. So the magnets are in place. It looks like I've gotten a little bit of mineral oil in my fountain. So it doesn't look as nice, but the neck doesn't oxidize, at least not severely. And it filled the whole tube. So the whole uh, cycle is full of neck. So I will now turn on the power supply and we will see what happens. Oi, do you see that? <laughs> Nice! Ah, it works! As you can see, the fountain worked pretty well. It drew around 30 amps at 3 volts, so it couldn't run for long or it would overheat. But the jet of liquid metal was not as high as it was in the video by periodic videos. So I waited for my additional magnets to arrive. So my new magnets arrived and I will now try to stack 4 of them. And I also printed a new mount, so 4 magnets fit inside here. And this way I have a lot stronger magnetic field. So while there is no neck inside, let's take a second to talk about the pump. This pump is a magnetohydrodynamic pump, which means that there is no moving part inside. As you can see, it's just a bare glass tube with two electrodes on both sides. These electrodes seal against the glass. They are made of tungsten rods. And the way this pump works is that um, you may have heard of the right hand rule. So there is a magnetic field going from the camera or towards the camera. This magnetic field is achieved by two neodymium magnets. Um, the magnets are on each side and one side is south and the other is north. And we have a current flowing from the left side to the right or the right side to the left, it depends. And because of that, we have a force, the Lorentz force act acting upon the liquid inside the neck, which propels it upwards. Okay, let's start it for the first time with the stronger magnets. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> 